but in this video we're going to go ahead and use uh, InDesign to create our travel guide, the entertainment and recreation sections, and we're going to go ahead and go through what the requirements are for those elements. So for entertainment and recreation, you're really trying to let your, let your visitor know what can they do while they're in your area. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the rubric. So for entertainment and recreation, I'm looking for section headline, so entertainment, recreation, and I want some subheads. I want it to have easy to scan text so you don't want giant tombstones of text there. For entertainment, think things that are kind of fun to do. Museums, galleries, theaters, theme parks, tours, monuments, shopping, kid-friendly. Um, for recreation, think outdoors, so nature parks, um, Garden, hiking, picnics, dog parks, maybe there's camping, maybe there's water or snow sports, maybe there's other types of water features. So you want to have a total of 10 different attractions that they can go to. Uh, I'm looking for your text frames to be used. Uh, definitely using those columns, threading them from one to another, not just making a jillion text frames, using that paragraph and character style. Looking for two graphic elements per page. Remember, graphic elements are not always images. Graphic elements can be check boxes, they can be um, additional illustrations, looking for those photo credits, um, images need to be placed not pasted with the correct resolution. As always you want to have no spelling, grammar, or punctuation errors and your inspiration tear sheet on that pasteboard. So let's go ahead and take a peek at some example inspiration uh, pieces for entertainment and recreation. So I kind of like these. Um, I like how they've got several different images. You can see here we've got a lot of really strong subheads, uh, some fun use of different types of images, and a map. So let's go ahead and take a peek at my InDesign document that I've got set up. So I've got my inner, I've got my pasteboard, my inspiration sheets right here. I've got my, my headline based on you know, right now all I'm doing is putting in some dummy pieces. So maybe I want to recreate this piece. This one doesn't really have a headline, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put, this one's got a really big photo, so I'm going to put a big photo in there. Um, it's also got a second photo down here. Uh, then I know that it's got some type of text box, so I'm going to go ahead and throw in a text frame. Um, a little bit of information right there, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that is my style for my subhead. So I'm going to write subhead for here. Right now I'm just putting in some dummy stuff for, so, for you to play with. So right now I want to go ahead and um, let's go ahead and add a some more text. So I'm going to go ahead and put my text in here. Maybe I'm going to make it one column here. Go ahead and fill that with my body copy. And I'm going to fill it with a text frame, placeholder text just for now, just so I can see what it's doing. Um, I don't expect you to put placeholder text in. I'm just kind of trying to show you how you can use the space. So I'm going to add another text box. Let's go ahead and add another text frame right in here. Nope. Let me shrink that one up so it's fitting. And let's go. Right click and fitting and fit frame to content. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna duplicate this box so I've got an extra one here. Now I don't want it running over in my margins, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I pull that text in. I can now see that I've got some overset text that I'm gonna have to deal with. Uh, I have to decide if I want to have two different sizes of text boxes. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this from one to the other. So I'm gonna grab my text and I'm gonna go from my out uh, from my, nope, my selection tool, my out port into my in port. That way, if I change the size of this, it's going to automatically pour from one into another. Um, pretty easy little tiny things, but that's kind of what I'm looking for. For my recreation page, maybe I want to kind of recreate this sample right here. So this is really just four columns. So I'm going to take a text box and I'm going to go ahead and put my four columns in. So I'm going to do a right click. Uh, let's change that to the body text. I'm going to do a right click and text frame options. Go ahead and change that number into four columns. So you want to have four columns. You don't want to have um, 
more boxes. Now, if I want to, I can make that width in between those boxes a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, playing with my gutter here. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my placeholder text. When I need to, I can do my insert and column break. Don't add a whole bunch of additional returns here. Um, you can easily create this type of, of element as well. So make your life easy. You'll use these rec use these pieces to help guide what you want to create. They do not have to be exactly the same. Maybe you want to go ahead and put this, move this here at the top. Uh, maybe you like recreation here. Maybe you want to go ahead and do, you know, one, three different small photos in here. And then some type of box. So I'm going to go ahead and make that much smaller. Cancel. Make that three small photos. So all I'm doing when I'm doing this is really just roughing out what I want those elements to be. So those are way too big. So I'm going to go ahead and select all and hit my shift and shrink all of them at the same time. And now maybe I want to create this second box right here. So all I'm going to do is put in another rectangle. So all I'm doing is just recreating some of these ideas. Then I know I need to have you know, maybe a little bit more text here. So I'm going to add a little bit more text underneath that box here. I'm going to just copy. I'm going to make a new one. So I'm going to add a new text box here, but I don't want one giant tombstone of text here. So I want to make sure I have it at least a couple different columns. So let's go ahead and make sure that's on body copy and just do our text frame options and make it two columns and OK. And so now I basically have made it so I don't have that big intimidating blank page in front of me. Uh, I can play with a lot of different elements. Maybe I want to use those knockout text. Maybe I want to use transparent text. It's up to you as to how you're going to approach this page, but you do have to have those five elements. So recreation, I'm looking for the five things outside. For entertainment, I'm looking for the five things that are inside. I did some photo credits up here on this page here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And let's come down here to my, photo, my photos and do a paste. And maybe I'm going to run my credits for this one just in the gutter. I know I have at least four or five photos. So I'm just going to put whatever those photos are. And I'm OK if you bury them over here in the gutter. Or if you want to, you can put them kind of in the photo. The trick is to not make them look like a caption. So if I look at these photos, look at my sample, and kind of see that here I've got a caption. So maybe I want to make sure that on this one I give some type of caption for where these places are also. So think about what does a visitor need to know? You're going to show them a really awesome picture. So what would you, the visitor, want to know next? Ooh, where do I go see that? Where do I, you know, how do I play? Um, how do I get to see? those elements as well. So maybe I'm going to add a circle image to kind of mimic that one. And then I'd have to play with my text frame, my text wrapping to make sure that I wrapped it around. So look at the rubric all, always, you know, always try and see what's going to make sense to the visitor. What do I have to say on this page? So I'm going to go ahead and shift and bring that in. All right, so now I've got kind of, you know, a few ideas here. Is it okay if I change them? You betcha. You know, you're not set in stone just because it's on your inspiration piece. You can totally change things as you go along, as things fit, as you discover different types of information. The trick is to make sure you have at least what's required for the rubric. So I've got my two per page. I've got, I'm going to have my five elements in here. I'm going to make sure I have some type of subheads. Um, so, you know, make it easy for the visitor. Maybe you really like how this inspiration page does this kind of this call out as part of their um, caption on this one. So that's easy enough to do. You could easily do some type of call out in here as well. So what makes sense for you? What type of style are you establishing? How are you going to keep telling your story from one page to another? I look forward to seeing what you come up with.